All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Ephraim. Today's date is October 2nd, 2022. And I'm saying, Ahaya Bayashim Yeshua Hamashiach Baruch Atua Adonai. And if you're listening to the sound of my voice, you are blessed to see yet another day. And for that, all praise, glory, and honor is due to the Most High God of Israel for now and forever. Okay, what I would like to do, um, I went back uh, just kind of, you know, reviewing a lot of my past uh, lessons and it, it, it was really it was brought back to my attention one of the, one of the things that really um, was discouraged me the last time I was trying to kind of kick it back up and be active here my videos went from you know from getting you know 30 40 50 60 70 thousand views mixed down to a couple hundred which doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of how many subscribers I have I mean I see I see videos that don't have nearly the amount of subscribers I have that have triple and, and quadruple the amount of views which leads me to think and believe that somehow uh, you know um, YouTube is suppressing my views I mean it just doesn't make sense but um, I got a lot of new subscribers so I'm hoping I can kind of you know rebuild and eventually you know my views will pick up because I, mean, I got a lot of really good uh, material that a lot of people really need to, to, to have an opportunity to see um, and this is one of them. I'm going to I'm going to re uh, upload um, my presentation on the the um, complicated relationship between blacks and Native Americans. I mean, that video was seen. Um, I mean, less than a thousand people. I mean, that's just that's just ridiculous, man. I mean, something something is amiss. Something's going on because it doesn't make sense. But again, I'm I'm, I'm kind of hoping that eventually, you know, it'll pick back up. It'll it'll kick in and they'll, you know, take you know take the shadow ban off me or whatever they got going on for my channel because I put in a lot of work a lot of effort a lot of research and a lot of those presentations and I mean you know it's free for you all but it's not free for me because it, it those 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 videos and those presentations took time to uh, not just research but to put together right and present it to you all you all just get to click on it and stream it while well, I had to put in the time and effort to put it together to present it to you so I'm really hoping that 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 you know eventually the you know it'll kick back in and um, I'll start getting the, the 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 proper views for my videos because it's just really I mean come on man 200 views here three I mean come on it's just ridiculous man but anyway um, hopefully God willing it'll it'll um it'll pick back up so anyway I wanted to, I wanted to um to resubmit this uh this presentation because not many people really saw it. And I'm going to do that for quite a few other um, videos that I have that no one really um, got a chance to see. Um, so, like I said, hopefully, you know, YouTube will, will you know, take the shadow ban off my channel or whatever they're doing is suppressing my views. We will release it, and and because it's, it's not fair, it's not right. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying anything, um, you know, putting anybody down. I'm not. I don't have a bunch of conspiracy theories. There's not, nothing crazy going on with my video, so I don't understand why they're suppressing my views. And not allowing the maximum amount of people to be able to view them. So I hope it changes real soon because it's, it's very disappointing. You know, I put a lot of work in these videos, these presentations, you know. So anyway, I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, until next time, it's Dr. Ephraim signing off. Saying ahai by Yeshim, Yeshua HaMashiach Baruch Atua Adonai. Shalom, elect. All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Ephraim. Today's date is August 25th. 2021 and I'm saying if you're listening to the sound of my voice you are blessed to see another day and for that all praises due to the Most High God of Israel now and forever all right today um, we're gonna deal with the complicated re relationship between blacks and Native Americans now, for all of you who know or may not know, um, with that infamous 12 tribe chart, um, Native Americans, uh, a couple of different Native American tribes are attributed to being the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, that is genetically not true, um, but I'm not even dealing with that aspect of it. Uh, the history of uh, of blacks and Native Americans, it's, it's it, it is it's kind of it's complicated. I remember when um, this Lewis, just Lewis Gates guy, 
which I don't know. I mean, I don't, it's not that I dislike him. It's just something about him that really irritates me. And I don't really know why, but he just does. But anyway, he, he, he deals in that, uh, doing the DNA test with all the stars and this and that. And it seems like he revels in the fact in revealing, you know, um, things that aren't necessarily, uh, you know, I don't know, honorable about, about their, I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. He's just, there's something about him that just really irks me. But anyway, I remember, he, I remember he did a, uh, a show one time saying how, uh, implying that most African Americans who, who claim to have Native American ancestry because of the, you know, they had an ancestor or great, great, great grandmother with the long, pretty hair and the high cheekbones, this and that, that, um, DNA revealed that they they didn't have any Na Native American blood at all, and that in fact um, that the, the the long hair and and and, and, and the cheekbones aside, um, come to find out that the the that great 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 grandmother or whoever or grand aunt or whatever uh, had uh, Euro European that was European blood uh, in terms of why the features why they look like that. So basically, he was trying to imply that. Um, majority of, of African Americans do not have Native American blood contrary to popular opinion and belief and I just I don't agree with that like at all I I, I don't um because I'm one like I said the relationship between blacks and Native Americans historically it is complicated because here you have two people that were um you know scrutinized that were um uh hated on uh, that that shared common um, commonalities with each other, right? Um, because and one thing I will give a lot of the Native Americans they 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 wasn't trying to hear that slave stuff. You know they they fought they fought hard they fought back. Um, many of them um, died and said that, and they would rather die than to be put into servitude or put into slavery. You know. Um, there were some um, there were some African Americans too, but you don't really hear about that. You don't you don't hear about those stories though. You don't hear about the pockets of resistance from African Americans, uh, quote unquote, that resisted slavery, like the ones that threw themselves over the board, or, you know, overboard during the transatlantic, you know, in the ocean to avoid slavery, to not you know. So they, they don't they don't they don't ever really talk about that. But but anyway, when you find when you have two people to share so much in common in terms of just being on the bottom, this and that. Um, you know you're gonna you're gonna gravitate to each other one way or another, right? Like I, I don't know if many of you know, but historically there 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 are historic men that literally li literally have Native American ancestry. I mean, just just if you just look at their features, like um Frederick Douglass, right? If you, if, now, now now given what I just said, look at Frederick Douglass's nose. You're like, wait a minute, he do got that he do got that Indian nose though. You know, well yeah, um Frederick Douglass. And I don't mean like way, way back in his bloodline either. Frederick Douglass was, Douglass was part Native American, right? So um, who else y'all know of back then? Uh, Red Fox from uh, Sanford and Son. Uh, he was prominently, uh, he was Native Amer had Native American blood. And it was prominent. It was, it, was, it was close, you know, close bloodlines that he had. That's why they call him Red Fox. I mean, think of his, look at his features, right? You can just, like, like Lena Horn. Um, I will get into that. I'll get into that. Um, when I start the uh, the uh, the lesson, but I'm just giving you examples of, of people that you have heard of that 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 definitely do have uh, Native American ancestry. I mean, myself, you know, personally, I, I'm, I'm I'm gonna share some of that with you all. Um, before I got into the DNA thing, you know, I had heard like on my father's side we were Black Indian and Irish, Black Indian and Irish. Well, when you look at the features of my family on my dad's side, you can li literally see those things. And when I got the DNA test, I actually saw those things on my DNA, my <laughs> black Indian and Irish. I'm like, wow. So that was fascinating to me. Right. Um, so, yeah, we you know, the, the, the relationship between blacks and Native Americans historically, it is complicated. Um, and I, I, I felt led to kind of just kind of deal with it you know, at the very least it'll be interesting or whatever so you know let's go ahead and get into it all right um so when you kind of know the history right of how um you know america was founded and you know uh the transatlantic slave trade important slaves this and that you know it's a given that that groups of people that are oppressed 
that are, um, you know, ostracized, disenfranchised, you name it. They're going to, they're going to, the, with all those commonalities, they're going to find each other. They're going to, there's no way they're not going to uh, get together and maybe even procreate. I mean, there's just no way, just, just logically speaking and logically looking at it, right? And so, um, because of that, sometimes I think we tend to romanticize the relationship um, of Native Americans and, and, and blacks back in the day. Yes, when, um, you know, uh, one thing that was, that was common, common and commonplace was that slaves ran away all the time. I mean, you know, who, who wanted to be in chains, right? Yokes of iron on the neck and, and feet and all that, right? So because of that, um, uh, the white slave masters would, 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 would hire uh, slave catchers. Now, sometimes they would use other, other slaves to catch the, um, the runaway slaves. And then, then there were times they would actually employ Native Americans uh, to catch runaway slaves. That, that, that's a historical fact. Now, yes, were there some tribes that gave a lot of the runaway slaves refuge and they wasn't feeling that, you know, whatever? Yeah, of course, of course. And there's no, you know, there's no glossing over that or denying that. But I'm just saying that don't just take that part and then just kind of embrace it and romanticize it like, like, like nothing else happened during that time because then that wouldn't be accurate. The, the, the fact of the matter is, um, yes, Native Americans and blacks, we, we did intertwine. We did mix. Now, maybe that small sample size that this Henry Louis Gates did, he didn't find any Native American in, in that very small sample size he did. But he's, he's you know, trying to make it seem or imply that Native Americans and, and blacks just didn't, didn't procreate. That's just, that's just asinine. Right. So and, uh, and um, so that 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 would complicate a relationship. I don't, I don't know if you all remember that movie Mandingo back in the day. Some of the older brothers and sisters might remember it where Ken Norton played um, played the slave meme. And he was a, um, a Mandingo and he was a fighter and he used him to fight. Well, on, on, in one scene, they used him to catch a runaway slave, Cicero. <laughs> Cicero, he, he just had that spirit. He he wasn't trying to be be nobody's slave. And um, he, he hated, you know, his oppressors. And so in that one scene where um, Mandingo actually caught him, Cicero said, you know, he said he would have got away if it wasn't for you. He told him I would have got away. He's, he started hitting the ground. He's like, man, I would have got away. He's like, man, man, you know. And then he made he made uh, Mandingo think like, wow, like, what am I doing? Right. But I mean, he wouldn't really have no, in no, in no position to 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 not catch him. If, if you know what I mean, but I understood the, the, the gravity of that scene and they ended up hanging Cicero or whatever the case may be. But slave catchers were commonplace. Sometimes they use other slaves. Many times they employed Native Americans. Um, rather, it was uh, it was profitable or maybe it was some type of um, exchange or whatever. But that did go on. And that's never virtually never talked about. Native Americans did, in fact, um, catch runaway slaves and bring them back to their oppressors. That's a historical fact. But I think a lot of our people tend to cling to the whole, you know, I got Indian in my family or I'm part Indian thing because they, they assume incorrectly that that's like the, the, the best part of their ancestry. They don't want to claim really the slave part of their ancestors, not knowing the full history of the relationship between you know, blacks and Native Americans, the perception is that to say that you're part Indian somehow makes you a little better than just being descendants of a slave. Y'all follow me? And, you know, so that's just not what it is. And I'm not trying to rain on anybody's parade or, you know, I'm definitely not trying to pull a Henry Louis Gates, but I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to kick the real. You know, I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. I mean, it is what it is, you know, um, to see in his story, this is history. Right. And so, Another historical fact is Native American Native Americans, uh, some tribes actually owned slaves. That's virtually never talked about. Again, with the whole romanticizing thing, you know, we tend to romanticize. We take we we, we take out the good parts and romanticize that, and kind of live in this just this dream world about it. You know, no, ain't no dream world, man. It's just, uh, um, like I said, the relationship has always been complicated. Yes, the red man was friend was a lot of red men was for for friends to the black man, but that just wasn't true all the time in all cases. Okay, um, so uh, <clears throat> stories about black and Native American connections are rarely told within the narrow historical context shared in classrooms, history books, and around family tables. But there are some details that reveal a more complete story 
of enslavement in America. In the 1830s, um, the enslavement of blacks were established in the Indian Territory, the region that would become Oklahoma. By the late 19th century, when over half a million Africans were enslaved in the South, the Southern Native American societies of that region had come to include both enslaved blacks and small numbers of free black people. Though the harsh treatment of enslaved Africans largely paled in comparison to that of white slaveholders, blacks were still treated as an underclass among Native Americans. Let me say that one more time. Blacks were still treated as an underclass among some Native Americans. The five civilized tribes, quote unquote, even established slave codes that protected owners' property rights and restricted the rights of blacks. Y'all follow me on this. All right. Here, I'm going to go over the five so-called civilized tribes who held black people as slaves. First on that list, the Chickasaw. It's no surprise that the Native Americans knew the land well, right? Their knowledge became a lucrative business, especially for the Chickasaws who had, you know, keen navigational skills. They were hired, like I, I mentioned before, by slave, white slaveholders to traverse the terrain to capture blacks, huh? Who had escaped slavery, right? The Chickasaw also held enslaved Africans of their own, and the system they established closely approximated that of white slaveholders on cotton plantations. <clears throat> and uh, the second uh, tribe, the Choctaw. The Choctaw, who sided with the Confederacy during their American Civil War, held blacks as captives from warfare. See, you don't hear about this stuff in history, but you don't hear about this stuff among, amongst our people. You don't hear about this kind of stuff. See, this, this is the stuff we need, we need to get away from the rom romanticizing and start embracing the truth, Israel. We need to embrace the truth. When the Choctaw adopted elements of European culture, such as large farms and plantations, they also incorporated the system of chattel slavery of people of African descent. Yeah, these are, these are Choctaws. I heard a few people say, yeah, I'm part Choctaw. Oh, really? <laughs> Slavery was abolished by the Choctaw Nation in 1865. Per a treaty signed with the U.S. in that same year, the Choctaw were, were required to admit quote-unquote freedmen, that was blacks newly emancipated from slavery, into their tribe. And then it gets a little tricky. <laughs> Next up, our good old buddies, the Cherokees. How many blacks and say, oh yeah, I got I'm part Cherokee, I'm part Cherokee. And I'm gonna get into the Cherokees that 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 that, that kicked out all the blacks. We're gonna get into that. Oh yeah, we're gonna get into it. But the Cherokee is the largest native ethnic nation in the United States. They also held more black slaves <laughs> than any other Native American community, like ever. <laughs> so the Cherokees were the biggest uh, uh, proponents of slaveholders as so-called Native Americans. And these, these are the people that our people are always so quick to kind of claim, you know, being a part Cherokee. By 1860, the Cherokee had 4,600 slaves. Y'all heard that correctly. They had 4,600 slaves. Those black people held captive revolted against the Cherokee in 1842. Uh, and so you never really hear, you don't hear about that. You hear nothing about blacks versus Native Americans. You, you, you don't. Um, next up, the Creek. The Creek Indians. Um, the Creek also adopted the enslavement of black people. Historical fact. Okay? No romanticizing here. And most of the enslaved Africans were owned by wealthy and prominent men, many of whom wielded considerable political power Black people were forced to work primarily as agricultural laborers, cultivating cotton for their masses' profit and food for consumption. All right. 
And lastly, we have the good old Seminoles, our, our, our Florida Indians, the, the so-called tribe, that they, the so-called Indians that they say is one of the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, one of your 12 tribes of Israel owned slaves. <laughs> I, hey, I can't make this up, okay? The Seminoles. Um, and, I, and I'm pretty sure they're on that, um, on that 12 tribe chart. The Seminoles had held black people as slaves. However, a, relation, a unique relationship evolved between them and enslaved Africans who fled to Florida to escape slavery on white plantations. Many black people found a comparable form of freedom among the Seminoles, and they were allowed a form of sanctuary in exchange for paying an annual tribute of livestock crops and military assistance. In general, uh, the blacks never wholly adopted Seminole culture or beliefs, nor were they accepted into Seminole society because they were not considered Native American. They typically lived in their own independent communities, elected their own leadership, and could amass wealth in cattle and crops. Black Seminoles were also able to bear arms for self-defense. Now, you know, what I just uh, shared with you all is, is the reality. And, um, and credit and, and, and to, um, to Ms. Barbara Shea Jackson um, for the, the, the story on this with the Latin Black Star. Um, this is the real, man. This ain't, ain't no romanticizing here, right? You know, and, and, that's, and that's what happens. We, we, we get caught up into what we want to believe the relationship was like, right? And we get caught up in the, um, the fantasy aspect and so reality just goes by the wayside, okay? But no, you know, the, the, the reality is, like, the, like the, the, the title suggests, the relationship between blacks and Native Americans has always been complicated. No, they are not Israel, okay? Knock it off with that foolishness. They're not Israel. Um, and, this, and, this, and I don't want you, you, I don't want you all to misunderstand. I'm not, I'm not doing this lesson to you know, kind of, you know, downplay them or, you know, disrespect them or anything like that. I'm just, my job as a teacher is to give my people the full, real, actual, and accurate view of what it is. I, I profit nothing to, to sell y'all a bunch of uh, romanticizing type fantasies of our relationships with people historically in this country, and they're no different. All right, so on to the next segment. So, you know, for all this, you know, I'm part Cherokee rhetoric espoused by our people over the years, right? Given the, the, the harsh reality of the information, I mean, the, Cherokee were, the Cherokees were the biggest uh, uh, progenitors of, of the slave, of slave owners of all the Native American tribes. Okay, and, and that's the fact. And, and, and so here we have the, 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 the Cherokee Nation decided that they didn't want any blacks in their tribe anymore. And, um, you know, African Americans, quote unquote, um, rebelled. They, you know, they wanted to sue and all this. I'm like, why would you want to be a part of a tribe or people or whatever who does not want anything to do with you? Like, I get it on the one hand. The so-called freedmen, right? But given the given the complex history of the relationship between Cherokees and African Americans, why would you want to be a part of that anyway? For those of you who who, who aren't familiar with with what happened, this this is this is what went on. This is what happened with the Cherokee Nation. The Cherokee Nation decided at one point to limit their membership to people who could prove they have Indian blood. Now, first of all, I have Indian blood. But Indian blood doesn't tell you what tribe or what Indian you come from or what, what Indian is in your bloodline or whatever, right? So, so what does this have in Indian blood? What, what is that? Like, 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 okay, I have Indian blood, but it, does that make me a Cherokee? No, it doesn't. Like, like having, having so-called, um, you know, Indian or Native American blood does not uh, tell you exactly from which tribe uh, your ancestor descended from. So, so that's that. Okay. But that, but they, they listen. They're they're sovereign. They make their own rules. They have their own nation. Boom. Okay. So, what they did is, um, that's that's that stripped, um, the right citizenship rights of about twenty eight hundred African Americans who were descendants of slaves, once owned, 
okay, by wealthy Cherokees. Yeah, let me. Yeah, y'all yeah, heard that right. It stripped the citizenship rights of about 2,800 blacks or Negroes who are descendants of slaves once owned by wealthy Cherokees. So those rights include access to health care clinics, food distribution for the poor, and assistance for low-income homeowners. The move prompted protests among these African Americans who are known as freedmen because their long periods in the past they enjoyed equal rights in the Cherokee tribe. But a more recent history their citizenship rights have been repeatedly challenged. In other words, they don't, they don't want them there. Okay? And, it, and it, this has probably been brewing for a long time. They do not want Negroes in their tribe, period. They don't, they don't care what the, 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 the situation was or what the you know, relationship was. They don't want you there. The decision also put the Cherokee at odds with the federal government. Hmm, interesting. The Department of Housing and Urban Development had already suspended more than $37 million in funding to the Cherokee Nation. The Justice Department said last um, week that a key election for tribal chief later in that month would not be recognized by the Department of the Interior, which has oversight over Indian Affairs. Now, see, I didn't know, that. I didn't know this part. The Bureau of Indian Affairs declined an interview request, but in a letter sent to the Cherokee Nation earlier this month, it said the Freedmen's citizenship rights cannot be revoked. The Cherokee first agreed to grant the freedmen equal rights in a treaty signed with the U.S. in 1866, following the end of the Civil War. The freedmen say they've been kicked out of the Cherokee Nation by people who are no more Indian than they are. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, the majority of folk who are members of the tribe have lived lives of white privilege, says Marilyn Van, who heads the Descendants of Freedmen Association. She says many Cherokees are largely white and are people who have never been discriminated against in their lives. Interesting. The Cherokee Nation's Supreme Court ruled in late August that the black freedmen could be stripped of their citizenship because they can't prove they have Indian blood. The tribe first voted in favor of this effort in 2007. While turnout for Cherokee elections tends to be low, more than 75% of all voters were in favor of the move. So what does that tell you, man? Oh my gosh. Cherokee leaders say it's not a matter of race, but a simple matter of narrowing the definition of Indian down to those people who can prove they have Indian blood. This is not a club. You can't just claim to be Cherokee and show up and be included, said Kara Cohen Watts, a vocal member of the Cherokee's Tribal Council. <laughs> the Cherokee Nation is the largest of three federally recognized Cherokee tribes. It boasts more than 300,000, I'm pretty sure it's a lot more than that now, uh, members, and um, like many Indian nations, it fiercely defends its right to self-governance. This is absolutely something that we have to defend, and the Cherokee people overwhelmingly voted in the Constitution that we want to remain an Indian tribe made up of Indians, Watts says. <laughs> Watts notes that the Cherokee Nation has decided that the freedmen will, will be allowed to regain their citizenship if they can simply prove they are part Indian. <laughs> if they can simply prove. <laughs> this is just, oh my gosh. Wow, man. Do y'all get the irony of this This uh, just, and the audacity? Like, that's what I'm laughing. It's just the irony and the audacity is just not lost on me with this, this whole thing. Watts also points out that there are approximately 1,500 black citizens in the Cherokee Nation who have not lost their citizenship, citizenship rights because they are not just descended from Cherokee slaves, but also from Indians. Okay, okay. I guess I can, I can see that. I can respect that or whatever. It is a largely forgotten footnote of history that some wealthy Indians in the Deep South owned African slaves. Not here. <laughs> Those slaves joined their Indian masters on the Trail of Tears when tens of thousands of Indians were pushed out of the Deep South and went west and west into the Oklahoma in the early 1800s. I mean, do you see the irony in that? The, 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 the racism that Indians uh, incurred under the hands of, of, of white people and, and, and they still were racist amongst black even though they went through what they went through. And we were together in many instances, but they still felt, even some of them felt that they were better um, than, than Africans, African-Americans or whatever. That's, that's just, it's kind of crazy. 
Um, the freedmen say uh, the nation's decision prevents more than 3,500 3, blacks from becoming Cherokee citizens because their applications have never been processed. They claim tens of thousands of freedmen exist and that many have been discouraged by historic discrimination and other barriers to citizenship blacks have faced, particularly in recent decades. The freedmen's estimates may be sound. Many historians agree that at least 10% of all people of, on the Cherokee Trail of Tears were black. The vast majority were slaves, though some were runaways and intermarried, free blacks. And see, what's not known, and, and this is also ironic, that a lot, a lot of Native Americans claim to be African American so they wouldn't be sent on a trail of tears. That's another footnote that no one, a lot of people don't talk about and you don't really hear. Yeah, they, they claim because if they, if they were African American, they, they, were, they didn't have to be forced uh, off their land. So many Native Americans actually claimed to be African American, and what that did is it, 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 you know, at least then at the time, temporarily, it, it halted them being deported, basically. But it really messed up the census down the line for for who for for who and what was considered Native American and African American, even because a lot of Native Americans claimed they, um, African American on the census and the dolls and whatnot, so they wouldn't be deported. A lot of people don't talk about that. Um, it says some Indian tribes have a blood quantum that requires a grandmother or great grandfather to be uh, be Indian, not the Cherokees. They simply require that a citizen have an Indian ancestor who appears on the Dawes Rolls. List of Indian citizens created by the United States government in the early 1900s. They included categories not only for Indians of various blood mixtures, but for whites and in blacks as well. In fact, the Dawes Rolls included thousands of blacks and whites who had lived with the Indian tribes such as the Cherokee for generations. These non-Indians were historically recognized as Cherokee citizens. And that's why some view the tribe's recent decision as, unju as, as unjust. Quote, they never said we were lying but uh, never said that evidence but they never said that evidence that is in the National Archives, that is the libraries here, was false. Van says, but it's basically we can do what we want to do. We have casinos. We can buy Washington D.C. from the top on down. That's the mentality of the folks here. Daniel Littlefield is a historian at the University of Arkansas who has written books on the subject. He says there's another problem with the nation's decision. Many black freedmen actually have Indian blood. Ah, oh, there you go. Quote, I have to say frankly that when you start making a blood argument for membership in an organization. You are dealing with race or whether you whether you want to or not, he says, which I, I agree with. But the problem is, he says, is that blacks, even those who were part Indian, were simply labeled as black on the Dawes Rolls. Yet those Indians mixed with white were labeled Indian. Now, that's interesting. That's extremely interesting right there. That's why Littlefield thinks it's unfair for the freedmen to be singled out. There are many Cherokees in the Cherokee Nation and on the Cherokee by blood roll who had very little blood quantum, he says. If you think that 1,024th Cherokee blood makes you a Cherokee, then that to me is one of the most blatant forms of racism. And uh, yes, 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 I completely agree. I completely agree. It's like how much percent uh, you know, quantifies you as Native American, right? Like, you know, and, and that's true. Oh, man, that, 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 that's, that's awesome. But I, let, me, let me just say this. I mean, on the one hand, in terms of just, just what's right and what's wrong, yeah, it's wrong for them to, to, to have done that, you know, to, to, the, to, the, to the, the blacks and their tribe, whatever the case may be. But my thing is, you know, um, while some of them, I'm pretty sure a lot of them do have some actually ch actual Cherokee blood, there's no way that they've, they've, their ancestors have been a part of that nation for years and there's no Cherokee blood. I, I just don't, I don't, I don't see that. You know, but but, you know, my thing is, I mean, you know, you have to pick your battles. Right. And at the end of the day, man, listen, I'm not jumping through hoops for nobody. I know I have Native American blood. I mean, I don't care. I mean, you know, because to be honest with you, my my Native American blood and even my Ar Irish blood came from women um, DNA contributors, not men. So, yeah, there was definitely a lot of a lot of race mixing going on. You know, back in the day, but um, before I really get on to the to the next segment, I wanted to share that story with you all because I mean, this is the harsh reality. This is what we've been dealing with for years. Like, you know, enough of the romanticizing. You know, um, a lot of these Native American tribes they have the same mentality as white people did against us, and even down to this day, a lot of Native Americans are very racist. You know, towards black people, and that's just a harsh reality. All right, moving on to the next segment. Yeah, so um, 
the last segment uh, was a nice segue into um, this segment, which is uh, pretty much using my uh, my DNA and my family. That's my grandmother um, right there. Um, God bless her soul. And like I said, for years, that's my brother, Sonny, um, you know, had heard about the, the whole, you know, us being mixed with, you know, black Indian and Irish. That's my brother, Tony. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's a trip because, like I said, you hear these stories like all black families. Right. And but but to actually see the DNA, of course, that's me and my dad when you know we were young. And uh, so um, you hear the stories. But and like I said, the DNA contributors to the Irish and the Native American and my family on my dad's side, my brother, and my two sisters. Um, you know, we, we knew the stories. We, you know, we, we was impressed about the Native American or even the Irish, you know. Um, it's a trip because on my dad's side, you know, they they just figured they were just light skinned blacks. They just kind of, even though they knew the history, they they weren't tripping on that. That's that's a brother, that's a cousin of mine, um, Brian. You know, and and I'm thinking, you know, they used to say that about the one the one drop rule. Well, you know, heck, that 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 one drop. I'm like, were were there more than one Irish woman and one Native American woman in my ancestry? I said because if you look at my family on my dad's side. I'm like one Irish woman did that. I mean, if you look at the features, even even the, the the eye color and all that, like you know, it's very pronounced on on my dad's side. So I'm like, wow, one Irish woman did that, and one Native American woman did that. So I don't know if there were more in my in my history or whatever the case may be, because the the, the features, um, you know, the, the the complexion, the eyes, the hair, you know, all that or whatever. So, but anyway, that that that's from my personal standpoint, one of my personal DNA when I did my journey, or whatever. You know, of course, it's all about the Y DNA haplotype. You know, um, even with all that mixing in my blood, there was no, there was no rapes. You know, um, thankfully, right? Um, my Y DNA goes back to Ephraim. You know, straight up Israel, and that goes to the point that I've always, I've always made that. You know, Israelites are we, we are we look very differently, right? I mean, even with all this so-called mixture in my blood, right? My Y DNA haplotype is still E1B1A7A, right? Child of Ephraim. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, child, child of um, of Israel, seed of Jacob, and that and that that kind of makes my point as well. It's, it's not about you know the, the percentages. When you take those DNA tests, don't worry about the percentages. Percentages just represent is a small microcosm of the the the, the, the vast mixture of our blood all, all over the years. But that Y DNA Y DNA haplotype is the thing. If a so-called Negro carries the Y DNA haplotype of a European, then nine times out of ten. Uh, he's descended from the result of a, 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 a slave rape more than more than likely or whatever. So it's interesting. It's the whole DNA thing. But like I said, the, the mixture thing, don't don't get into that. It's really not about the mixture. I mean, you know, a percentage of this percentage of that. At the end of the day, it still goes back to your, you know, what your what the what your Y DNA haplotype or the Y DNA haplotype of your father is um, to uh, establish your bloodline. And like I said in the beginning, there are many prominent uh, African Americans uh, who have a uh, considerable amount, considerable amount of Native American blood. This is James Earl Jones, you know, OG, right? I mean, he looks like one of my dad's brothers. I mean, he, as a matter of fact, I think his ancestral makeup is, is the exact same as mine, black, Indian, and Irish, right? Um, you look at uh, federal uh, Frederick Douglass, you know, um, again, you know, uh, world-renowned abolitionist, you know, fought for the freedom and uh, of, of of black people and, and 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 slave and everything like that and but you know they never they never talk about it but clearly I mean he's he's Native American he's part Native American but it's never talked about um, Rosa Parks who had a huge hand in the civil rights movement you know when she you know, decided she she wasn't going to give up her seat um, to a white person and sparked that whole thing with the civil rights movement you know she was you know she was a, 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 a sweet spirit you know God bless her soul you know um, but definitely a lot of a lot of Native American history with her. Uh, ancestry red fox you know that's why he got the name red fox <laughs> get it i mean let's, you just look at him he's kind of tail like you just know but but it's it's like they they never even talked about that part of him he not neither did he really you know lena horn um you know she was a quote-unquote light-skinned black with a lot of native american ancestry um but she was all for the civil rights she was all for black people so one time she even um refused to to sing if blacks couldn't be up to the front with the white folks or whatever so she definitely um would take a stand as far as civil rights and so 
Uh, James Brown, a lot of people don't know it, but but James Brown had um, prominent Native American uh, ancestry. I think he claimed um, Apache. I believe that's what he said one time many 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 years ago. And uh, just to 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 address the the elephant in the room, a lot of a lot of I won't say a lot, but some people. Some of our people seem to think that you know black people are 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 native and aboriginal to the uh to north america the united states i mean i don't agree with that at all but i mean you know what i would what i will say is that um i, I believe personally the reason why we do resemble um each other is because because of the fact that unlike what henry lewis gates was putting out there there was a lot of um uh, race mixing. No genetically Native Americans and, and, and Negroes that came here on those tra on a transatlantic slave trade. We are not the same people. Um, genetics tears that to shreds. We're not. But 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 what's true is that yes, of course we're going to resemble each other when you when you start mixing the races and mixing the bloodlines. Of course you're going to look alike. Of course you're going to have ancestors uh, down the line. It's going to look like someone from back in the day that may may have been Native American or or whatever the case may be. That's that's the elephant in the room. So I said, well, let me let me just go ahead and, and address this to, to to those brothers and sisters who think that we're we're Aboriginal uh, Aboriginal to the United States or North America. No, I don't believe that to be true at all. You know, we we were. We're from Northeast Africa. I don't know what y'all talking about. If you think you're from North America somehow, some way, you know, do your thing. That's not what this <laughs> presentation is about, you know. But I don't believe that. I just do know, and I'm addressing the fact that yes, um, you know, there there was there was a lot of mixing going on, you know, unlike what uh, Henry Henry Lewis Gay said. So that's why we as a people we look so much alike and have some of the same features, whatever, because of all the race mixing. Right. And I mean, you know, and I just want to say this, you know, kind of to, 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 to end the, the lesson. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope it was I hope it was interesting, whatever the case may be. But, you know, enough of the romanticizing, you know, who we who we are, who we think we are, who the Native Americans are, who we think we they were and who, who we romanticize them to be. OK, let's just deal with the reality. This is not a disrespect to them or anything like that. But we are not the same people. Yes, we did share a lot of commonality, commonalities back in the day in, in, in slavery times, whatever like that. Some of them did give us refuge, right? You know, props for that. You know, shout out to their ancestors for that, right? Um, but a lot of them didn't. A lot of them, a lot of them enslaved us as a people. And a lot of them saw themselves as better than us, even um, the same as, as whites saw themselves better than them. And that's just a harsh reality, my people. So listen, I'm going to go ahead and end this uh, this lesson. Hope, like I said, I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, please uh, like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel. This is Dr. Ephraim signing off. Saying hi, Yeshua Hamashiach, Baruch Atua Adonai, Shalom Amalek.